Welcome. I'm Cody Askman, Secure Edge Mentor. I have the distinct pleasure of interviewing my buddy, David DuFord with Final Expense Age of Mentor. How are you, brother? I'm good, Cody. Thank you so much for having me today. How are you doing today? Good, man. I'm, I'm doing well. I had, a good, I had a good weekend. How about you? I did absolutely nothing. It was the greatest weekend ever. Nice, man. That's, that's always the best. It really is. It's always, a, it's always more fun that way. That's right. Absolutely. So Dave, uh, man, you've inspired me and you're probably inspiring a lot of other people. Not only do you deliver valuable content almost every day, but you're someone that thinks bigger. You're someone that is putting your thoughts on paper. I think it's super impressive that you started, you started to write books. You're, I mean, how soon, how early in your career did you realize, hey, I want to bring value and help agents. When did you, when did you learn that that was your mission? Well, uh, I'll give you the short and the long. Okay. It first started when I wanted to recruit agents. Let me just be honest with you, right? Yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> Second of all, um, truthfully, I mean, you know how it is. You've been doing this a long time. Uh, this business is predominated by multi-level marketing, which typically uh, eschews and, 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 and covers up the transparency of information. Information wants to be free. And uh, I saw myself going through this business, realizing that it's a great opportunity if done the correct way. So that's where the idea of doing the YouTube videos came from. Uh, that's where the ideas of writing the books came from, just as a way to translate what I've learned through my miserable failures and successes to an extent. Sure. Uh, so people hopefully could learn from them and give themselves the best shot into the uh, insurance business. If they could. Well, you've done an incredible, you did an incredible job. I, I, I really believe that uh, if you're not a household name amongst insurance agents, you will be very soon. Just you, you can't look up an insurance related video without finding valuable content from you. So thank you from myself and all the agents in the business for everything you do before we jump in. Appreciate it. Thank you. You got it. So you, you, you've recently written a book. I'm guessing it's finished. Pretty much, yes. Okay, for the most <laughs> call, part. Call it finished. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what was your motivation for this specific book? Yeah, so, so the book is entitled um, Interviews with Top Producing Insurance Agents. And the whole motivation behind this book, I'm actually looking over here on my uh, giant bookcase here. Uh, several years ago, I read this book here. It's called The Greatest Insurance Stories Ever Told. Um, it's an MDRT book million dollar round table book for you guys that don't know. And inside of this are like all the, the legends of selling insurance. You've got Tony Gordon, Sidney Friedman, um, Mar Feldman's in there, Norm Levine. These guys are all, Burt Meisel, great guy. Great, great book to get. But what was nice about this book is that it was not just a, another, here's how you sell insurance book. It was actually a deep dive into the history and, and, the, and the stories of how these insurance agents started in the business, which many of them started from unusual circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, they started with, you know, no apparent signs of guarantees of success or normal people and how they had dramatic success. I love the concept of the book, and, but the problem, there's not so much of a problem with this book. It's just, it tends to be, I don't want to say outdated or antiquated. There's definitely uh, uh, eternal lessons for any insurance agent in this book. But I wanted to give kind of an up-to-date feel, more Absolutely. specifically around um, what I would call retail uh, insurance sales, you know, more of the mom and pop type of sale versus what's in this book is more of your business owner type of selling corporate uh, executives, that kind of thing. So that's what I did. Um, I've done a series of interviews over the past uh, maybe half of year uh, with you. You're featured in the book, of course, with a lot of other people. And, and simply put, all I wanted to do was detail their success uh, from start to finish to where they were currently and uh, give an avenue for new agents, struggling agents to see really yeah. what people are like getting into this business and what really is possible. You know, you talk about thinking big, the importance of it, and I can't agree anymore. It's, it's absolutely important. And uh, that's what I attempt to do with this book is, is to show what you can do and uh, get people to really be excited about selling insurance. Yeah, we talk about all the time, everyone on YouTube does, about 92% of agents fail. And so by, I think it's brilliant to culminate a lot of people that have fortunately had success in this business and you're able to bring all those together for every insurance agent in the country to and in the world to learn from 
other successful people just like yourself. So I think that's, I think that's super cool. And, and I, I'm excited to get to get a copy of and get to read it. Interviews with top producing insurance agents. So who, who is, uh, who, who's all in this book? Who, who's, who's profiled in the book? Of course, you and I did an interview together uh, where we talked extensively about uh, selling final expense over the phone. That, as you know, has been a, a hot topic over the last couple of years. It's gained a lot of steam. And there's a lot of people interested. So I thought, why, why not interview you? You know, you've got a lot of experience doing it. And uh, you would be a perfect uh, uh, example of how to do it successfully. Thank you. Bro. Uh, so probably your audience being on YouTube, probably familiar with uh, Christopher Westfall. If you've done any sort of uh, Medicare uh, sales training type of video searches on YouTube, you'll run across Christopher Westfall. He's got a great story, real, literally a rags to riches story. Um, also, um, if you're in final expense, um, most likely you've got a, a contract through a guy named Alan Town. Uh, he is a three decade veteran in the final expense business. He literally was around before it had kind of like any sort of steam or as much impact right. as it does today. This guy is, is his business, his agency, he has issued in excess of a half billion dollars in final expense business. And we get to see wow. his process getting in the business as a bartending surfer in Florida to a guy that makes, you know, millions and millions of dollars. Uh, That's cool, man. Just where he is to this point today. So it's a great wow. transition. That's and crazy. then, of course, we talked a lot of six-figure final expense agents uh, that, you know, started, came from teaching, uh, came from places not related to sales, you know, all walks of life. Again, to give that full diverse picture of, you know, who's out there, who's successful, and what it took to get them there. Wow. That's cool, man. That's a lot of rags to riches. You know, if I, if I can suggest a theme song for the book, started, yes. from, started from the bottom, now we're here, right? That's cool, man. Rags to riches. That, that, and you know what? You got a lot of good names there that we can all learn from. Westfall in, in particular, I got a lot of respect for what he's done for this, for, for this business. The fact that he's an ex-police officer, I love that. You know, naturally, I think that's just amazing. That's cool. Uh, he, he's a natural, he's naturally good at serving people, and helping people. And so I think that's awesome. I think it's right. really, really cool. Yeah. So you, there's hundreds, if not thousands of people that have been successful in entering business, maybe tens of thousands. Why'd you select these individuals and, and shoot? Why was I so lucky? Well, I thought it would be important again, kind of going to the concept of this book, the uh, greatest insurance stories ever told to give it an updated feel, but I, but I also wanted to give more diversity as far as the people who represent success, if you will. Sure. And, but, but also their backgrounds and, and the products they sold. So a lot of whom I chose was simply because they represented unique, different lines of essentially retail, most of the time retail type of insurance sales. So I just didn't want a book about final expense agents. I think right. a lot of people will benefit from the, the stories about final expense agents who've been, become successful, but maybe their final expense isn't for them. Um, maybe I could inspire someone to have interest in disability sales, like the interview that I did with Jim Schneider, a great guy, great product to sell. So I wanted to also educate people, not just on how to be successful, but with what products to be successful too. So that was important just as success stories to say, you could do not only be successful in final expense, but maybe you're more inclined to selling Medicare. Look at uh, Nick Williams or look at Christopher Westfall. Yeah. Uh, maybe you want to sell employee benefits. I talk with a guy named Jim Ward who started in the 80s and he writes, last year wrote $15 million in employee benefits. He's got over 200 wow. employees. Yeah, nationally, that's oh. what he does. And um, again, this guy started off literally as a, um, he came out of uh, West Point, you know, with, with very little business experience. So I wanted to just show that whole profile, not just with, right. It's enough to show, it's great for agents to see successful stories from start to finish, but also that you can do it with anything. And that's kind of the trick, right? Is to find the product that we believe in or most passionate about, and then apply the kind of lessons that we learn from these agents to, to, to hopefully realize the same level of success. Yeah, exactly. And, and there's a lot of different, that's what's probably one of the biggest struggles for agents is there's so many different ways to succeed in this business. Employee benefits, Medicare, final expense, P and C. I mean, just, they're just, there's dozens and dozens of avenues, little niches that someone can be successful at. Uh, and so I think that's important. I think that's cool that, that you kind of highlighted a few so that it wasn't just all this because just because you may sell final expense 
doesn't mean that you can't learn something valuable or, or, or pull a nugget from someone that's in this space, right? And so, so something that's unique though is when you were interviewing everyone, was there a some commonalities or like a shared work history or prior experiences before they got in the business that you noticed? I mean, I think, you know, I think what you'll find through these questions that we'll continue to ask is it's funny because a lot of people think, okay, what's the best product to sell? Uh, yeah. Is it final expense? Is it Medicare? Is it disability? Is it term mortgage protection? But what, what's funny is, is as I did these interviews, I realized that the, the, the process in which we went down more depth. Now there were some technical skills that of course, an agent will read this book and learn that they can incorporate in their own game. But many of the guys that are making million dollars plus a year in this business, as I interviewed a few of, a few of them in this book, mm -hmm. they talk about mindset. They talk about character. They talk about discipline. They talk about these traits that really drove them through to the point where they were just massively successful. And, and I always looked at this as like, you know, it's why do, why do they, they spend time talking about all this like character stuff? I mean, okay, yeah, we've heard all this stuff in school, blah, 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 blah. But then as you bec begin to experience success yourself, it really is funny how you can start to relate to that more because a lot of these people struggle at one point in their lives, you know, in the business. Many of them, as we'll talk about, face quitting and they yeah. keep going anyway. So, so I think it's not so much to answer your question, you know, I didn't see necessarily people that came from, say, they were from B2B sales or they came from a, an entrepreneurial background. It, it, I, I originally thought that. But where, where all these people tend to have more in common is this, this mentality of never quitting. Uh, they, they don't give up on themselves. They're, in a sense, pig-headed, disciplined, uh, and, and determined to get their goals that they want to accomplish. So it's funny because it's not so much of where in a career mindset they came from. Because most people don't dream about getting into insurance sales. You know, they just no. end up there because there's no other options. And, uh, but, they, but they had this kind of, I don't know, this, this spirit, I guess you could say. All of them did uh, that pushed them forward to this great level of success. What is it about? Because a lot of people think, uh, you know what, they see – they may see celebrities or movie stars or, or just people in general that are successful. And you're like, well, I really don't want to pattern myself there because they don't have any character anymore, or they're not someone that you want your kids to pattern after or whatever. When, when you were interviewing some of these successful agents, what's really neat is you mentioned, you mentioned mindset, which is obviously really important for scaling up and growing in, in, in anyone in, in personal life or in business. You mentioned discipline, which, having the discipline to do the things that you may not always want to do, but you're disciplinedly, you're consistent about doing them. But I think the coolest thing you mentioned was character. Um, along the way, those people didn't lose their character. They didn't let the people knowing them or the money or, or, or some of the semi insurance fame keep them from being humble and, 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 and treating people with respect and doing the right things and, and still having character. Uh, why is, why is that something that uh, they made sure that they didn't lose or naturally they were just good people that never lost it? I mean, to, 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 to highlight character for a second, because I think it's super important. What was it about that and, and those individuals that they didn't, the character almost grew and got stronger as they grew rather than the opposite, which we see a lot of times? You know, it's, it's kind of an interesting thing. It's an interesting question you're asking it's the first thing i think of is one of the old sayings i used to hear was you know money doesn't change somebody it just really reveals more about who they are you know it exaggerates their that's good positives or their negatives right and it's true you know um i can personally say it for myself you know i've gone through a pretty big change in my life because of the insurance business and i'm like the same dude that was you know, had 90 bucks in his bank account after his first year in the business and was almost broke. A little less stressful now, yeah. but not any different than I was. And you can see the same thing with the people who, who maintain sustained success. That was important for me too, because yeah. you can certainly get people who are massively successful and they're, but they're flashes in the pans. And I'm not saying that mm -hmm. the ones that are all successful for a long time all can do it because they have perfect character. But I tend to think that the ones that have 
you know, uh, bad intentions, the ones that are, are bad guys, I guess you could say, and they're out there in every business. Uh, eventually, if, if your focus is not on the benefit of the people you're assisting, um, whether it's your agents or your clients in the field, you'll eventually be had, you'll eventually be found out and your reputation will be ruined. And um, it's just a matter of time till that happens. So I think, I think to partially answer your question, sort of, kind of, is I think a lot of these people that I interviewed, you know, their, their primary focus is on how can they be of service? How can they help? And that's what I've realized too. And that's why I do, that's why you do too, I'm sure, Code. Not putting words in your mouth, but you do a lot of videos because you're being a service to people. You're helping people. And, and, and the more you help and the more outsized you help people, you'll, your money concerns, your financial success will be well taken care of. You know, if you don't focus on what can I do to make X amount of dollars and you focus on how many people can I help? How can I assist people? How can I make a difference? It may take longer, but it's the right way. Yeah. And it'll be sustainably successful for it. So I don't know if that answers your question, Cody, yeah, but it's an interesting, interesting point to bring up. I think a lot of these people we talk to in the book really represent that. Thank you, buddy. I, I, that, that's a fantastic answer. Uh, I think you, 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 what you mentioned, money kind of brings it out and, and, and who they really are. I think that's cool. And this business is so small. It's big, but it's small that, hey, people are going to talk. And, and if, you're, if, if you're not doing right by people, you will be found out, as you just said. You really, really will. And, and that's something that I've always noticed about you. Everybody in our office, everyone always says, hey, you can tell that Dave dude is, you can tell he's a good guy and he means well. and He, he really likes helping people and bringing value. Well, going back to the book, when you were interviewing people, what was some of the top positive characteristics or traits about them that, that you noticed uh, that was kind of a general consensus? I think, I think it comes down to just never quit. You know, um, again, I can think of a couple of people, um, you know, Westfall at, at some point in his career had some difficulties. Um, you know, he started off in final expense. He did well. But for him, he saw that it was a hamster wheel and he wanted to get on more of a renewal driven pathway, but it was a very difficult transition. And, um, you know, but I can tell you personally, you know, I had a point in my career where I got deviated from the, the known path of success mm -hmm. and trying to figure it out. Like I know better than what already is known to work. Sure. And, um, you know, I temporarily quit the business but I was still drawn back into getting into it because I found out what it was like working for somebody else, not my cup of tea. Completely. So um, I think the biggest, again, it comes back to that attitude. It comes back to that mentality. Um, I, I commonly say that in business, you really have to have faith. It's almost like a religious conviction that despite evidence and despite even your spouse or the closest people in your life telling you otherwise, you know, you have to make this personal decision to commit to something because most agents at one point or another will face quitting. They'll face a point where Completely. they think they can't get out of this, but they've got to find a way to get through it. And why is that the case? Because vast majority of the people on here all, ex all ex face something like that. They fit what I call a pivot point where they could keep, they could get, go back to their jobs. They could go back to a wage, they could go back to the comforts and certainty, or they can go all in, damn the torpedoes. And uh, I think that's the one major factor uh, that all of them have is that they just, they don't know when to quit, which is why they're successful. Dude, dude, I love that. But how does someone end up with that? Because everyone's always faced with trials, tribulations, tough times, as you say. What makes one person give up and quit, leave the business, and the other person just, they're like, they're, they're, their mind is so set on, I don't care what happens, I will never quit, no matter what. Walk me through that a little bit, because you got a chance to interview some really neat people. You know, it, that's a great question. Um, I think, like, look at this, I have books everywhere that, that are answering these questions, serendipity. It's got this book uh, by Brian Tracy. It's, I, I, I love right Brian now. Tracy. Yeah, it's called Maximum Achievement. And 
and it's funny. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's, I think, I think part of it is that why do some succeed and others do? I, I don't know if it, this is a, it's almost a, a spiritual thing. You know, when the te- when the student's ready, the teacher will appear. Yeah. Um, I, I just think some people, some people on some level, honestly, just can't cut it. Um, sure. You know, they've got issues in their lives. They've got excuses. They've got reasons why. And they're just not ready for the transition to this type of career, which of course on the surface looks easier than it really is. Cause this is really a war between your ears, Completely. no matter what it is that you end up selling. And you've got to conquer yourself in a sense. That's why I think it's kind of a spiritual thing in a sense, because you've got to be able to handle yourself, which is the most difficult thing anybody can do. Um, and some people are going to do it and some people aren't. Um, so I don't know where I was actually exactly going with that. I don't, I don't, I don't really know. Um, you know, maybe some people have the luxury and like myself, um, I, my father was a business owner. Uh, you know, he struggled, uh, for a long time. And so I understood the fact of how he went through life and eventually succeeded and uh, sold his business, retired young. So I have the, 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 ability to see what it was like in the transition. So I could have a little bit more faith, I guess you could say, but um, yeah, I, I don't know. You know, it's, it's, it's very difficult to say, you know, that's why I made this book, I guess, is because right. you need to have models design that you can relate to. I think, I think, you know, if, if we think of the Bible, you know, Jesus is representative of, you know, he, he, he connects with people because he, he t- tells biblical concepts and parables. Mm-hmm. You know, he explains something that people can relate to in their life and walk through life. I'm not relating myself to Jesus by any chance, however. Uh, but what I am saying is, is that stories right. are a way to connect and a way to understand on a, on a much deeper level than just being saying, close more, you know, or say this script instead. You know, sometimes you need to sh- explain things in ways that you can see, wow, I'm not the only one who struggles. I'm not the only one who thinks these things. Yeah. You're not alone. And with different stories like this, you really get a varied sense of things. But you also see that there is a pattern. There's a pattern of success. Like Brian Tracy says, you success leaves clues. And if you look for the clues in the form of stories and things like that, you'll be surprised at what you find. Is, is there something that you do or that you notice some of these other agents do to where they're really close to quitting. Is it just, is it just, is it just the mindset that, you know, they're expecting some, 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 some negative things to happen and they know that it's in their control to overcome those and keep going where, where in some people maybe don't realize it's going to be as tough as it is. And then they're more likely to give up. Well, what, what would, well, to touch on that real quick again, what would you, uh, what would you say it is that gets that the one person to not quit versus the other? Is it just like the, their mindset to keep going? I mean, it's that, that that's what, that's the, the part of that. That's just so cool to me. And that's why I feel like ni- about 92 out of every hundred agents fail. Dude, a lot of, a lot of them quit. I, I, I wish there was something that those eight did. I don't think there is. To, I think it's just, I think it, like you said, I think it's just mindset. Yeah, you know, and, and a lot of people who, th- who fail think, oh, there's some sort of secret sauce they have. And again, this book hopefully will try to dispel that because yeah. most people who are successful experience all the same frustrations that said frustrated person experienced too. Well, how did they figure out how to get out of it? Well, they just never quit. I think, I think to answer your question though, excuse me, it comes down to a reason why. You have to have a burning passion for what it is that you're doing. There we go. And in a business such as this, where I hearken commission, straight commission business, you wake up unemployed every morning, right? It could be your last day you sell anything. And it's your complete responsibility. You have to have complete ownership for the outcomes of your business. That's a really tough thing to swallow for a lot of people. And you, you have to really, 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 believe in what you're doing, believe in yourself and be committed to the entire process. Um, I mean, I can tell you personally about myself. I absolutely hated, hated the idea of working for somebody else. This was not in my DNA. My father was an entrepreneur. 
My grandfather is an entrepreneur. Uh, my uncle is a consultant. You know, he was in a cr- programming side of things in radio. And uh, I just, the idea of working for somebody else is like, it's like my reason why. You know, right. I, I just hated the idea of doing it. And then I, when I failed out of the business temporarily, I had to go get a job. I had to work for somebody. And then, and I look back and I'm glad I went through the failure because I learned through the lessons of it that this is what it's like to work for somebody. This is miserable. You know, I have no ability to scale my income. I have no control of the politics that are going on. You know, my advancement to some extent is determined by the person above me, if they like me. Uh, and, and, and these things just are, don't, do not sit with my genetic function, I guess you could say, down to the DNA level. And so that was a real strong point. And like I said, I'm glad I did it because it reminded me of why I got an insurance and it's because of the freedom. Um, and, and it's because of the flexibility and the things that you get that so many people like right now are stuck in an office somewhere that don't want to be there, you know, because that's just the choice they made. Yeah. So you have to have a passion uh, that drives you, you know, maybe it's the idea of being extremely successful in life having a lot of money. Um, maybe it's fear of poverty. You don't want to be super poor. My dad always told me that. He, he said, I, the driving force of my life was being poor. You know, he grew up in a Catholic six kid household, 1200 square feet in um, Lincoln Park, uh, a Detroit area. So he understood that. That was his driving force. But I think what you see happen is that people who eventually fail out of this business do so because they, they never really had the conviction you know, they're okay working for somebody else. It wasn't that big of a deal. You know, they, 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 they like the idea of being free and financially free, but not bad well, now. You know, I could work for somebody else. It's not that big of a deal. It's, you know, yeah. so that's, I guess that's why I say it just depends on where you are in your life, you know? Um, and, and, you know, there's kind of this just natural process of some, some are ready for it. Some aren't, you know? Maybe they'll come back to it again later in life. That's so. good. Nice. Thank you, buddy. Okay. And also, uh, you, you dispelled something earlier about how even people that are successful, they have a tough road. Some agents, they don't see that. They would think, oh, that, that person, you know, that person's never had a rough day in their life. They're just, they're just, they just woke up and they were great at insurance, you know, and that's rarely is that actually the case. Do would you say that even top agents experience low points and hardships in their career? Oh yeah, no, no doubt. I mean, um, certainly on the way to the top. Again, I think that is the call it the karmaic force of the universe. Yeah, or something you you have you will be tested. You know, you have to in a sense you have to welcome the test of your convictions. You mm-hmm. say that you want to be successful. You say you want to be on top. Okay. The universe puts these obstacles in front of you not to, um, you know, to test you. You know, maybe it will take you out and you just weren't ready for it or whatever. But, you know, this process, it's, it's all on how you look at the obstacles in which you approach. You have to have a mindset of, of looking at it for the lesson that you may learn from it. And, and that defeat isn't permanent, it's just temporary. So, um, and certainly... Um, you know, a lot of top insurance agents too certainly struggle, you know, to maintain their production, to maintain their activity. You know, um, many of, many of the people you'll talk to who are absolutely at the top of their game are, are very, are very, uh, driven and, and every detail matters to them. And it's very stressful. Again, you may not see it when you see them, but you don't see what happens behind the scenes. There's so much in life. You know, we have Facebook and YouTube. We see everything when it's perfect. We don't see all the work goes into it all the stress, all the, all the things behind the scenes. Right. So, yeah, no, I mean, nobody gets out alive. Nobody gets to the top without high risks uh, that had to be circumnavigated. Um, you know, the, the ones that are on top are the ones that face their obstacles down and uh, circumvented the things that most common people never get over. You know, it's, it's not because they're more intelligent, more smart. Even, even Alan Town, again, who half billion dollars in final expense, he's, I think he's like a little over 50. He said, he said to me at the end of your interview, he said, Dave, I just want your audience to know I ain't got nothing on the on your guys, on you guys. I ain't got nothing on you except time. It's all I've had. 
just time and absolute laser like focus. That's all I've ever done. It's all I've been good at. Wow. And so, you know, and it's true, you know, it's just time focus and a willingness to commit. It's, it's so simple and even trite, but boy, is it true. Yeah. It's, 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 it's super, super true. Uh, it's, it's, I, I don't know. I don't know about other agents. I, I know it's just true as well because we get a lot of questions about it. But just, just, just that, just that mindset, being able to handle those challenges, to realize that hey, when you, if you want to be successful, you will experience hardships. Like for, for instance, even our videos and content, a lot of your stuff, I guarantee you that you would never know it. Dave's had some some bad days, some hard days, but when you get on video, when when, you, when you're focused on delivering value and content you put that aside, you move on, you know, you've already overcame so many stinking hurdles in your life and in this business that once you get another one, it's just another hurdle, right? I mean, well, it's hard to, it's hard to, it's hard to remind yourself of this in the moment, but the truth is, is that every obstacle, every hurdle in your life is a, is a reference point of, of learning. You know, you get stronger, you get more wisdom, and, and these are the things, you know, I, that's what I was reading this, this morning, maximum achievement. You know, Brian said, you know, people who are wise are wise, not because they avoided or, or never experienced pain or making mistakes. They're wise because they did. Yeah. So, you know, look, that, that, that's what makes you a, a special person, a unique person is not the avoidance and, and never experiencing, you know, basically the cycle of humanity, which is suffering or, or struggle. It's what makes you better. And, and you should on some level embrace it, even though we all want to avoid a lot of the financial stress and things that come along with life um, that in certain phases of our lives. But without these things, they don't make us the kind of quality people that we are. I agree. So you not only interviewed a lot of top producing agents that are, that are super experienced, a lot of them, I mean, veterans, agents that are maybe, you know, younger like you and I, old dudes that, Every, everybody in between, different lines of business. But you also interviewed agents and marketers that are crafting new methods in this business. Tell us a little bit more about kind of the the because because I really believe the next the next ten years this business is going to change a lot. Kind of kind of tell us more about what you experienced in these interviews from that perspective. Yeah, so I, I thought it was important to look at what has always worked in different lines of business, but also profile those individuals like yourself that are taking a new twist on the typical routes of doing business. Like you said, you only have to look so far as at, at Amazon, let's say, and see the entire retail world upended, uh, mm -hmm. how Amazon has affected every aspect of normal American consumerism since 20 years ago is just remarkable. Right. Um, and, and the same will happen for the insurance business. It already is happening to an extent. Insurance has been a lot slower in this response. So I interviewed a couple of people I thought would give us uh, a little bit more of an insight of that. Um, first, of course, was, was yourself and, and taking a traditional business that's done face-to-face -face and uh, turning it into a, a digital approach to doing business without the necessity of being face-to-face -face and how to scale that and how to be successful. Um, I also did a, a pretty good interview with a guy named Jeff Root, who Jeff Root yeah. has been, um, yeah, he's been in the business probably for 10 years approximately. Uh, he does a lot of work with agents on the uh, search engine optimization side of things and developing websites. And uh, he's got great success stories of people literally in the final expense business. One guy in particular should have interviewed him, maybe on the next book. Uh, he's written in excess last year of $500,000 in business, final expense in his home because of website leads that he self-generated. Wow. Yeah, nobody thinks that's possible. If you talk no. to 90% of final expense agents, oh, it's, it's Mrs. Jones in the trailer. That's who you sell final expense to. She's never heard of the internet. Obviously not. So, um, you know, I wanted to bring some of that out again because it goes back to thinking big, opening your mind and looking at ways to differentiate yourself because right now we're in this technological upheaval. It's going to have an impact on every aspect of life. It already has. And it's coming to an insurance agency near you. Mm -hmm. and, and, and to survive in business, you have to adapt or die. And so, you know, these stories will, and, and experiences will show people, you know, what you can do to prepare for that, how you can build your business to be a 21st century type of business, 
and, and experience a lot of the opportunity that's really, really untapped when it comes to the more, I guess you could say, modern day approach to selling life insurance. Yeah. On that note, how do these, how do these top agents handle those technological, those, those tech opportunities when they come up? And does it have a, you know, even, even when it has a negative or positive impact on them, because a lot of times they're doing business one way, business takes a big shift. The business, this business will take a big shift as, as it already is. How do they, maybe it benefits them. Maybe it doesn't. How, how do they respond and how, and how do they shift? Well, I mean, you just have to be prepared to analyze the market, what's going on, and then, and then plan accordingly. Uh, you know, I, I look at the final expense business as the perfect example. Um, right now, we're kind of in this, I don't know, I wouldn't say it's an upheaval, but you, you see some definite problems with, in some circumstances, in some markets, to generate direct mail leads. Yeah. And I'm a big believer in direct mail. And there, but there's a lot of agents in certain markets that just can't get direct mail at a reasonable price to justify getting into the final expense business. And so what's the solution? Solution is what you do, which is generate Facebook leads. Mm -hmm. um, they are proven to work. Uh, there's plenty of testimonials and examples, guys that I work with that do well with your leads, others as well. And you have to take advantage of certain things in order to sustain yourself in the business because there are things that you that just have no control over as an agent, such as Hey, if you're selling health insurance 10 years ago, you know, and the ACA came out, it destroyed health insurance agents. You know, you have to adapt or yeah, you're going to die. And um, you just have to be prepared for what's coming on the horizon. Be willing to be flexible. Um, you don't want to change everything. You don't want to change your business model entirely. But, you know, you have to be willing to try things out and be in an experimental type of situation so as not to be counted out, to not be another statistic of the 92%. Yeah. And, and it goes back to, uh, you're going to, you're going to see some hurdles. You try some new stuff. You're definitely going to see some hurdles. Um, it may make you want to quit going down that road of opportunity, but, uh, those that do well adapting or those that, like you said, they just never quit. They never give up something that, something that I'm extremely impre impressed with. Uh, and this goes back to character you as individual, the legacy that you're trying to leave on this business, that, hey, it isn't always about the almighty dollar. Um, and if anyone knows you at all, knows that you're a dude with a big heart, you know, that loves people, cares about people, is in it to help agents. Um, something that I was impressed with is you've decided to donate the proceeds of this book for a charitable cause. Tell us more about that. Yeah. So I did this with the first book. Let me kind of describe that before I describe uh, interviews of top insurance agents. Um, with the um, official guide to selling final expense insurance, there's a guy on the insurance forum a couple of years ago who was suffering from a disease that he had to literally go to Mexico to get stem cell treatments for. He had mm -hmm. to raise $50,000. His name was Mark Rosenthal. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people on the forum came out, helped out, donated. And about the same time, a book was coming. I thought, you know, it'd be great if I could uh, promote this guy's, you know, desire, his, what he needs help with, and, and, and then cross my book into it and give away the first month's proceeds. So uh, we did some promotional efforts. And in that case, we raised, I think, about $1,500, $1,600 that we donated to Mark uh, to go towards this fund. Eventually, he raised the full $50,000 and, uh, you know, was very, it was doing well at this point. Nice. As far as this book, what I've decided to do is for the first month, the book is out. So right now it's slated to be released August 15th, 2018. Okay. So for the next 30 days till September 15th, 2018, I plan to give after cost profits to the Wounded Warrior Project. So for anybody that purchases a hard copy book on Amazon or who goes to my website and purchases an ebook version, it doesn't matter. Uh, the proceeds after cost will go towards uh, in one lump sum as a donation towards the Wounded Warrior Project. So I like doing this stuff. It draws a lot of attention to worthwhile causes like this, of course. And uh, yeah, so I thought it was a pretty good idea. So, and, and I'm even more impressed that it's, you know, especially the Wounded Warrior Project, that's beyond impressive. Why that cause? Um, because there's no cause in my mind that really is more warranted to be supported. Um, 
you know, we have the luxury in, in this Completely. nation of ours to uh, enjoy an, an insurance business without threats of uh, violence, uh, of, of national upheavals that could take our lives uh, to the point that, you know, I probably take it for granted. And uh, these men and women put themselves on the lines uh, to protect that freedom. And many of them uh, struggle, uh, come back uh, and, and bear a lot of what they experienced uh, physically, mentally, and uh, need help. And uh, this, this cause does a great job to help them out. So I figured, hey, you know, this is a way to give back uh, through what I've done in my life to be successful. And, uh, you know, what better way to do it? Yeah, and that, that, that helps out in two ways. It, it helps bring value to agents and, it, and, it all, and in turn, it helps a extremely worthwhile cause. So thank you for doing that for, for everybody. That's, that's cool, man. I love that. Especially uh, the, just our military in general, I have a ton of respect for them, as I can tell you do as well. So that's, that's beyond impressive. That's super, super cool. Thank you for doing that. Uh, interviews with top producing insurance agents. There's a, there's a couple of ways to uh, produce your book. I think you just, you just led on to a couple of those. Mm -hmm. Say them again for those that maybe didn't catch what you just said. Sure. So if you look, I'm just going to assume you're going to put this in the link or in the description box, Cody. <laughs> there should be guys. If you look in the description okay. box on Cody's oh. YouTube channel, uh, or at least this video, you'll see a link to amazon.com. Below the video. Yep. Below the video. Yes. And click that link that will take you to the book. You can just buy it there. That's a hard copy version. If you want the ebook, uh, you can go to my website. It's feagentmentor.com. Look for the uh, link at the top that says interview book, something like that. It'll be pretty obvious. And then you can just buy the ebook version uh, and read it immediately if that's what you like to do. So either way works. That's cool. That's really good. Uh, so kind of take us behind the scenes real quick about writing, having the idea for, there's a lot of agents that have a lot of knowledge and maybe they want to put it on paper. They want to write a book. They want to do something creative. What was it? What was it that, that took you to write a book? The things that maybe you've learned about writing a book, publishing a book, releasing a book, is, is there anything that, that you want to, you want to add that would help other people encourage other people that, that maybe want to do something similar? Well, um, let's see. I started my book, tabled it, started again and tabled it. It took me about two years to get it out. Wow. Uh, it's, it's anybody who's written a book is going to find that it's just a, it's just a slodge. It takes a long time to formulate the book, the, 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 how you're, what you're going to talk about, the process in which to write it. Uh, it's a labor of love, I guess you can say. Yeah. Um, but there's, some, there's a few tips I could give you that I think help tremendously. Um, number one, and this is good for me because mostly I do videos and I can ramble on for a long time, <laughs> as I normally do. Um, one great way to, and the, the, the hardest part is just starting. I think you and I were talking about that begin with um, yep. you can always get some kind of recording device whether it's in front of your laptop uh, and just dictate you know uh, come up with a, an outline you know you want to write about the sales process you want to write about whatever come up with an outline and then each bullet point you go down just start talking start recording um, and if you look 10 hours of audio, probably it would be a 152, 200 page book wow. and you can come up with a rough draft. Yeah. It's, it's going to be ugly, but now you got something on paper and then you yeah. can start to formulate your thoughts. You can start to edit it. You know, a lot of book writing takes a lot of editing. The first sample is going to be rough. It's a rough draft <laughs> and you just go through the process, clean it up, edit it, go through it several more times, clean it up, edit it. But to me, the biggest thing is, like you said, getting started doing something and having something to work with. It's very hard, I found, sitting in front of a computer to type out a manuscript to a book. So for me, it was about, okay, well, I can talk all day. You know, I can, I can formulate my thoughts fairly well on camera. Well, I could do the same thing on audio and then dictate it or get it transcribed, and I've got a great outline. So that's, that, to that's, me, is number one. Some that's a brilliant idea. Makes it so easy and helps people that want to do it just to start. 
All right, so this was all about the book that Mr. David Duford is releasing, Interviews with Top, in top Producing Insurance Agents. You can find it at feagmentor.com or right below this video in the description, in the link. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to purchase the book, as I feel like others should too, for two reasons. Number one, you're going to get a valuable nugget. You're going to learn from successful people, so you might as well, right? If you learn anything, it's worth whatever you pay for something, if you get one nugget that you can apply to your business, I feel like whatever the cost was, was you'll get it back 100x. That, so that's the first reason I'll be purchasing it. And the second reason is the proceeds are going to a charitable cause that I can get behind and that I would donate to anyway. So you might as well, right? In, in, in closing, is there anything else you want to uh, mention about interviews with top producing insurance agents? Yeah, no, I, I just I just really feel that this book is meant for the new agent or the especially the struggling agent. Um, there are so many people that 92% that you talk about that quit this business because not because they couldn't be successful, but they just didn't know how to be successful. Yeah. And there's nothing worse than a guy who quits because he just didn't know the opportunities that were out there. He just didn't know how to get from point A to point B. And where a starting point was is just miserable, like a lot of these agents. And so my goal for this book is to help out those agents that want success, but find it elusive, that find it difficult. You know, there's no points of uh, lecturing in this book or anything like that. It's simply just the stories that these agents decided to uh, convey to me. And I think through reading through it, Struggling agents especially can find answers to some of their problems and can look within themselves and see there's no difference. There's no, and that's what I want. I want you out there that's struggling to look at this book and say, there's no reason why I can't be successful like this guy. This guy didn't have anything. He didn't have a spoon in his mouth, you know, silver spoon in his mouth. He didn't have any sort of, you know, mojo or some, you know, secret sauce, except he just worked harder than I did. And once you realize that you can, take the same type of character traits and implement them in yourselves and change yourself from within to change your outcomes. You know, you're going to give yourself a fighting chance to be successful in this business. And then eventually over time, realize kind of great things that you get out of selling insurance and working in the insurance business. So, you know, that's who I really hope gets this book because it's going to have the most impact on, on that kind of agent. Nice. Thank you, buddy. This is Mr. Dave. This is me interviewing Dave about me interviewing Dave about his book, full of interviews with top producing insurance. Yeah. Dave, thank you very much, very much for allowing us to interview about this book. Thank you for writing it and yeah. from all the agents, buddy. Appreciate you putting the time and effort. So thank hey, you. Hey, Cody, thank you for having me and, and being a part of this book too. I appreciate it. You got it again. The link is below. Make sure to take advantage of it. Dave, thank you, brother. Take care. See you. See you guys.